Between the 1970s and well into the new century, I've embarked on a number of journeys across the Australian mainland. Let me take you on a journey and show you some of the car troubles I've had while exploring the Australian outback. It was 1988. I was on another trip, this time to Western Australia, and I was still driving the full Katina. The road to Marble Bar was dirt, but I was able to maintain speeds between 80 and 90 kilometres per hour for most of the trip, except when I encountered the odd dry creek crossing and scraped the bottom of the car because I was travelling too fast. The first hit of trouble occurred 45 kilometres south of Marble Bar, when suddenly power to the car was lost. A quick check of the fuel gauge showed there was still plenty left. The plain fact of the matter was that the car was slowing down. It finally came to a halt and a couple of movements with the throttle arm showed no fuel coming through the jets. So I poured a small amount of petrol down the carburetor, turned the ignition key and the engine burst into life, then died as quickly as it started. Maybe there was a blockage in the pipe that leads from the fuel pump. No amount of effort on my part could move it. In the end, I just gave up. There hadn't been any traffic on the track since I left Newman, and it had been two hours since the car had mysteriously broken down. From the south, I saw dust raising from the air, which was a sign that somebody else actually did use this track. A Toyota four-wheel drive vehicle came into view. The driver wasn't a mechanic and couldn't tell me what the problem was, but agreed to tow me into Marble Bar. We hitched our two vehicles together with a tow rope that had definitely seen better days. By the time we got going, the sun was already starting to set behind the western ridges. Before the lights of Marble Bar came into sight, that tow rope got shorter and shorter. I was a nervous wreck by the time the two vehicles rolled into town. The car was parked outside the garage, which by this time had closed. Just across the road was the Iron Clad Hotel and that's where I spent the rest of the evening drowned in my sorrows. The next morning, an inspection under the car revealed a ruptured fuel line. A few days later, while on the same trip, I ran into another problem. I hadn't seen any other traffic for well over two hours. The road was sealed, but very narrow, just wide enough for one car to stay on the road if another vehicle passed in the opposite direction. I was about 145 kilometers from Wyndham when a passing truck launched a fair-sized rock in my direction that resulted in a direct hit on my windscreen. The sight and sound of glass changing to the crazy pattern typical of a smashed windscreen is never welcomed. But it's even more of a worry when you can't find a town that actually has your model windscreen in stock. At each town I made inquiries, the answer was always the same. It would be a number of days before they could transport a replacement in. As it turned out, it was three days and over a thousand kilometres added to the speedo before a windscreen was once again in front of me. I probably saved the lives of thousands of insects as I travelled those roads with the front of the car open to the elements. <laughs>